started as working in the um, construction to build this place in 1999. Later I was um, given the job. So I worked for the past 17 years here until Francis Tom Pro. Then I started following him around. You know, because you know, like me, everybody wants to hear my story. Some people, if you tell them to live here for 17 years, the kid could be something like Francis. They say, I'm not going to do that. Say, well, you see, that's, what, well, see, that's the sacrifice that you do. That's the story there. Everything can't be glamorous every single time. You have to put in work. That's where the story is. You see what I'm saying? And people go pay attention in how you got there. I, I knew Francis since he was young. I trained with him. I traveled with him. So I know him from, from zero to 100. Francis and I joke about that, but I think I was seven, he was nine. He always says we, I, I didn't know who you were until we were like 11. He came out, I was ready, yeah, did good in a tournament. He's like, who's that guy? <laughs> uh, maybe 12? I would say 12. Uh, two days after he was born. Oh my gosh, he was about six years old, Francis and Franklin. So I was here when Constance was here and he was riding them around in the carts. They used to sleep in the massage room. It was like family here, I mean. We had to put up decorations and Christmas trees. We were just all here. We would do birthday parties every year for the boys in January. So yeah, I've seen them since they were little. And now, I mean, seeing him now is just amazing. Him and Franklin, both. I mean, I've been here since it was built, but 2001, 2002, picking up a racket, messing around. I mean, the, only these guys have known me for so long and tell the stories of me walking around, dragging the racket around and uh, asking members to hit and hit it on the wall. My dad would take my racket and my hand and hit up against the wall and twin brother would always be alongside and we kind of get out here just doing the do and, and things kind of, you know, transpired after that. But time goes by quick, man. I mean, I definitely remember those moments like it was yesterday, you know, now we're sitting here. But Constance is a character. <laughs> uh, so Constance, I mean, Constance was pretty much the, like the father of the tennis center. He helped build this place from scratch. He was a head of maintenance. And frankly, he was also a, a customer goodwill person. I mean, he just spread happiness. And he obviously passed it on to his sons. His dad used to sleep right there, you know, next to the fitness room, right there, that window, one of those windows there. Their mother worked in a hospital at night sometimes, and their father was working here, so Sometimes they would come and spend the night here. Yeah, well, he would sweep the courts and, you know, bring Francis to sweep the courts with him. And then, they, you know, he was staying in the here in the rooms. And it was a pretty, pretty incredible setup, incredible story. So He was always working. He works incredibly hard. I remember when we would come in the morning, he would always uh, brushing the clay or, or the watering and taking care of the facility in any way he could. He, al he was always here. He always worked, he always worked super hard, and I know that led to Francis for sure, because that guy is, they, they work hard, all of them, the whole family. I don't think it's no shock why he's that good and, and hasn't reached his full potential yet. Well, the first thing for us, uh, for me, I'm from Africa. If you don't take your kid to where you fr you're from, they wouldn't see actually what life is all about. So my kids, before they used to ask me, Dad, why you work so long hours like that, 18, 19 hours a day? I never gave them an answer. The only answer I gave them, I sent them to Africa for a month. So they can see how, you know, you go to a third world country and come over here. So then you can look at opportunities in a different level. So when you're here and have an opportunity like this, you can't let it go by. You know, like I was saying about Francis, he had, he didn't have any opportunity that, that he came through the program, just like all these kids are coming through the program. So, you know, it's just about putting in the work. Look, you may not end up being 10 in the world. Put in the work, you'll probably be pretty successful. I mean, that's, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, putting in the work.
stop that. Yeah, I hear him chat to the noise. And stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys. Guys, guys keep talking, yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. Let's go tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hot like fire on the pines. If you want to touch my game, yeah, just touch it. He did it. Service break, Tiafo, four points. I mean, we're the only place in the country that really grows its own talent in terms of a, a top high performance academy. He's by far the, the biggest celebrity, you know, but he's really an outlier. You know, 99% of our kids are, play college tennis and we've been very successful at that. We have over 300 graduates and they've earned over $24 million for the college scholarships. And you know, we could continue to do a fabulous job for the next 10 years and not produce another top 10 in the world player. I mean, there's so few, I mean, think about it. There are 11 Americans in the top 100 in the world. That means there are 11 decent jobs for Americans in professional tennis. Francis is like, he represents every kid. They all dream about like, okay, I wanna become number one. I wanna become uh, Michael Jordan. I wanna become this, I wanna become that. When he was growing up, same thing. He's just like, you know what? I wanna do my best, whatever it takes. You know, his, his story is pretty incredible, obviously. He didn't have much growing up, and when he, you know, he was able to take advantage of every opportunity that he had, he likes to help some of these young kids out. He likes to help the program out, and he likes, so when he's able to come back, I think he really enjoys it. You know, he knows that it's, it's good for them to be able to see him hit and practice, and so it, I think he enjoys coming back here. And he's, I mean, it's, it's his home. He's, when he's here, he's, you know, he's probably staying at his mom's place. So it's, it's, it's like he's back to when he was a, a kid growing up, so. You know, many athletes uh, start thinking about their legacy toward the end of their career or after their career has ended. You know, Francis, he's just hitting the peak of his career and he's thinking about his legacy. Very rare in any sport, forget tennis, the USTA Foundation and the Francis Tiafo Fund will have so much momentum through the peak of his career. He'll tell his story. I came from a community, under-resourced tennis and education programs, and you can be just like me, kids. The Francis Tiafo Fund is an opportunity for Francis to be able to take ownership, and USDA Foundation is going to help with this process. The fact that he had the opportunity, we want to make sure other kids have that same opportunity. We have over 260 NJTL chapters everywhere, so the fact that he can help as many kids as he possibly can would be amazing. I mean, full circles. Francis has always wanted to do this. Yeah, I like mentoring. You're giving back to uh, younger kids, and they look up to you, and you need to be a good role model to them, and it's, it's feels good. Like pretty big responsibility for me. I'm a product of JTGC and the NGTO. I've been thinking about, you know, creating a foundation for a very long time now and uh, learning about the USTA Foundation mission to bring tennis and education for kids to have a chance, uh, specifically people who look like me, um, to do something great. It's something that's important to me. You know, everyone's different. Everyone has their, you know, different things that matter to them. But, you know, for me, I want, you know, a lot of people of color to be playing the game. Um, we're in, in, introduced to it, and not to be me. Everybody see Francis like, if he does it, we can do it too. I think bringing it back to where he started is exactly what he wanted to do, so that way he can show other kids that, you know, it's possible. He's like, he's a huge inspiration for this whole place, because every kid here, now they believe they can, they can do it too. They decide to want to play pro tennis, great. If they become pros, great. If they end up, you know, being doctors, lawyers, whatever, whatever, great. But through the game of tennis, and I think tennis can give you so many different avenues. It teaches you discipline, self-sacrifice, uh, um, hard work, and that's all. And that's all you need in life, right? So, um, it's a it's a great game to to continue to walk to life. Playing the 16th day of September is Francis Tiafo Day. Oh, my God.